cara Alessandra, caro Giulio, Livia, amici e compagni di lavoro di David, dear mayor, governor, guests, participants to the European Diplomatic Academy, colleagues of the College of Europe Administration, faculty, dear students of the Sassoli promotion, and cara Roberta. Thank you. Thank you, first of all, for being here. Thank you for joining our college community as we officially inaugurate our academic year, 22-23, in what is probably one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult year for our continent. And it's a bit scary because I'm afraid I've said the same last year and the year before that that would have been probably the most difficult year for Europe. And yet we could not imagine that after all the crises Europe has gone through, from the Eurozone crisis, the financial crisis, the terrorist attacks on European soil, the effect on climate change on our continent, the pandemic, we had to face also war in our century, in our millennium on European soil. And this highlights even more the importance of the European Union and what your contribution to the European Union is and will be. But thank you also for joining our college community as we dedicate our academic year to David. In January this year, immediately after he left us far too soon, we received uh, hundreds of messages asking to nominate David Sassoli as the patron de promotion of the College of Europe for the academic year 2022-23. Students, alumni, faculty and staff of all nationalities and backgrounds, and by the way, he would have loved this participatory way of choosing our patron de promotion, they all wanted, they all asked to honor and thank the man, the European, the president of the European Parliament and rightly so. David was, for many of us, a friend, but also, and always, a guiding light, a compass of lucidity, integrity, wisdom, and humanity. A brave, honest, gentle European, proud and humble, able to listen and to connect with each and every person he found on his way. His smile, his open, welcoming smile, was much more than just a smile. It was his identity card. It was even somehow, I think, a political statement. This smile that you see and you will see for the rest of uh, the promotion, but also for the rest of your life, I hope, this smile was saying that no matter how harsh the words could have been, and he was able of very harsh words when needed. No matter how profound the disagreements could have been, still he was and stayed open. He was listening. He was trying to understand and making his best to be understood with humility, respect, but also with the strength of his beliefs and values. This smile was telling to anyone he met that he was welcoming the person, the human being, before and beyond diversities and divergences. His eyes, his mind, his heart were always open to others, all others without any distinction. David was afraid, a friend, I said, and this is how I felt and how I feel. But I know that uh, there are hundreds, probably thousands of persons in this room and out there in Italy, in Europe, across the world, that feel exactly the same, that they have lost a friend, because he was a friend of many, very diverse individuals. This was his gift, his talent, and his strength. This doesn't mean that everybody liked him, not at all know that he liked everybody. There was no naivete in him, and for sure he would have never softened his positions to please someone. 
Having been a journalist, and a very good one, an excellent one, he knew how to choose his words in the most powerful manner. He was always clear, unequivocal, easy to understand. If he thought that something was wrong, he was just saying it, and then doing all he could to change it. There was no compromise possible with him on values, on democracy, human rights, and rule of law, on equality and social justice, on peace, international cooperation, and respect of the rules-based international order. They were the foundations of his identity and of his being European. And obviously not everybody liked this, inside and outside of the European Union. But even those who didn't share his ideas and his actions still respected and admired him, and still do. Sincerely, I cannot think of anyone else having received so unanimous and uncontroversial recognition across the political spectrum, across institutions, but most importantly for him, across society at large. And he wouldn't have considered this as an element of individual personal pride. He would have considered this uh, unanimous recognition as a sign that still in the polarized world of today, there is some space for coming together, for respect. Coming together, finding or building common ground, unity in diversity. Without any hypocrisy, but with real commitment, this was for him the essence of the European Union, notre raison d'être. Et je ne peux pas trouver des meilleurs mots que les siens pour dire pourquoi il est notre patron de promotion au Collège d'Europe pour l'année académique 2022-2023. Permettez-moi de citer presque en totalité un article qu'il avait écrit pour la Revue de l'Union européenne juste quelques semaines avant de nous quitter. Le titre est « Nos valeurs ne sont pas négociables ». Je cite « À peine 76 ans se sont écoulés depuis la fin de la Seconde Guerre mondiale et 32 ans depuis la chute du mur de Berlin. Des périodes synonymes de destruction, de pauvreté et de souffrance pour tous les peuples européens. La mémoire de l'histoire est un fardeau. Et malgré les belles formules de genre « plus jamais ça », c'est avec incrédulité que nous assistons en Europe à la résurgence des vieux démons, de l'antisémitisme, de la xénophobie, du racisme et du rejet de la différence, portés par des nouvelles vagues de nationalisme. Si l'Europe dans laquelle nous vivons aujourd'hui se porte mieux, nous le devons à ses conquêtes et à la détermination des millions de citoyens qui croient au projet de nos pères fondateurs. Il est de notre devoir moral et de notre responsabilité éthique de protéger tous ceux qui se battent au jour le jour pour la justice, qui exigent la transparence de la part des institutions, qui sont en première ligne pour assurer la libre information de tous les citoyens, qui luttent contre les régimes oppressifs qui restreignent nos libertés. C'est pour ces raisons que nous devons nous efforcer de défendre sans relâche notre demeure bâtie sur le pluralisme, la diversité et l'inclusion. C'est pour ces raisons que l'Union européenne s'engage activement à défendre la démocratie et les droits de l'homme, y compris dans ses relations extérieures et à ses frontières. La démocratie, la liberté et l'état de droit ne sont pas négociables. Les valeurs sur lesquelles repose l'Union européenne ne sont pas négociables. En ce temps difficile, certains pays, malheureusement aussi au sein même de notre Union, ont cru pouvoir remettre en cause les fondements démocratiques sur lesquels nos États ont bâti ce projet de paix, de coopération et d'amitié entre les peuples, l'Europe. L'Union européenne est une entité dotée de règles communes que nous avons tous acceptées volontairement à la faveur de l'expérience que nous avons acquise de la démocratie. Malheureusement, il ne faut pas aller bien loin pour se faire une idée concrète de ce que pourrait être notre Europe sans le droit de droit. Il suffit de penser aux lauréats de prix Sakharov de ces dernières années. Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, leader de l'opposition démocratique en Biélorussie, se bat pour que le régime de Loukachenko ne viole plus le droit des citoyens, ne réduise pas la société civile au silence 
et n'utilise plus la répression comme moyen de contrôle au quotidien. Alexei Navalny a mené des vastes campagnes politiques contre la corruption du régime de Poutine, ce qui lui a valu d'être empoisonné et emprisonné. Comme eux, bien d'autres dans le monde se battent pour le droit de chacun. Nous ne les oublions pas. L'Union européenne est fondée sur les valeurs de la démocratie et des droits de l'homme. Lorsque les droits de l'homme sont remis en cause, lorsque la démocratie est en danger et que les fondements de l'État de droit sont ébranlés, nous avons besoin des plus courageux d'entre nous, défenseurs des droits de l'homme, syndicalistes, journalistes, blogueurs et professionnels de médias, artistes et éditeurs, tous ceux qui osent donner une voix à ceux qui n'en ont pas. Or, l'autoritarisme gagne du terrain même au sein de nos frontières, à l'intérieur de nos frontières. Au sein de notre grande famille, nous nous efforçons constamment de respecter les cultures, les mentalités, les histoires et les structures sociales de chaque pays membre. Mais nous ne pouvons en aucun cas céder sur certains principes et valeurs. Les pressions sur le système judiciaire, la pénalisation de l'avortement ou de l'homosexualité, les obstacles à l'information, la création de zones sans lesbiennes, gays, bisexuelles et transsexuelles ou la propagande discriminatoire ne sont pas des valeurs que l'Europe partage. End of quote. As you see, David was open, smiling, gentle and kind, but this doesn't mean he was compromising on what he believed was the essence of our democratic life. Also in this, I believe he is a guiding light for all of us in these awful times. He knew that uh, the most authentic and in the long run effective manner to counter a certain vision of societal and international relations that is based on conflict and aggression, the best way to be assertive in today's conflictual world is not by accepting that paradigm and trying to compete on the ground of power politics, but on the contrary, it's clarity of vision and consistency with our values and principles. For him, this was Europe's strength, democracy and being consistent with our values. Let me use again his own words, and now I quote uh, from a speech he gave one year before leaving us in January 2021, in the middle of the pandemic, where he joined our college community, unfortunately online because of the uh, restrictions, uh, the lockdown, um, at the opening of our conference uh, that we organized here uh, in Bruges uh, on, the conf on the future of Europe, virtually. In that occasion, in a long and very fascinating exchange that he had with our students and faculty, and I would invite you all to go and have a look at that, I did it and it was a strong experience, he said, I quote, Putin says democratic systems are outdated. No, I do not agree. Democracy can still preserve and build our freedom. If you have a paradigm that can keep together fundamental rights such as defense of freedom and dignity of individuals, this is a paradigm that is not often found around the world. Europe can be the reference for others, so we have a huge responsibility. Perhaps we are not proud enough, and this is one of our shortcomings. So many would like to be like us. We don't want to impose anything on anyone, but we want to be able to be proud of how far we've come in 70 years. Our countries have found peace, and perhaps today, this might allow Europe to become a true instrument for peace in the world. Without wanting to impose anything on anyone, never. But so many admire the European construction that has been so difficult, so slow, but so important. We can be a beacon, an example, a point of reference for the rest of the world. And this could be, for us, the engine we need to go on, to raise the level of our pride in the EU project, because we need more Europe." End of quote. Yes, he was very proud of our union, never complacent, 
always vigilant on our own contradictions and shortcomings, and always aware of the responsibility of institutions. Democracy is fragile and needs to be taken care of, he said in that same speech here at the college. And he continued, everyone is talking of whether autocracy or democracy is more effective. If we let go of our values, we'll have abdicated our identity, and right now, our European identity is particularly important because crises need to be faced with full transparency. This is why democracy needs to be efficient." End of quote. He was gentle, not naive, open to others, but also extremely solid in his convictions. He was proud of our union and at the same time always aware of its limits, of the work needed to renew our democratic system and stay true to our ideals. He was a man of the institutions and of the people. This is why his institution was the European Parliament. And Roberta, our choice to have David as our patron de promotion is first and foremost a tribute to the institution he was serving and you are serving today. When he opened the premises of the European Parliament to the people in need during the pandemic, he was doing the most natural thing for him. He was uh, literally putting the institutions at the service of the people, and in particular, of the ones that need it the most, as he said in his very last speech, recorded just a few days before leaving us. In that speech, he also celebrates Europe and hope, just when hope on his own life was fading away, because he was like this, thinking not of himself, but of the others, always. He said, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You already learned when an applause is definitely needed. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. He said, uh, Hope is us when we do not ignore those in need, when we don't build walls at our borders, when we fight all forms of injustice." End of quote. Institutions have to serve people, he constantly said, and one of his main objectives has always been to connect institutions and citizens. Il écrivait, dans l'article que j'ai cité tout à l'heure, que la démocratie, je cite, est une conquête de tous les instants fondés sur la confiance des citoyens dans les institutions. Nous devons renouveler et reconfirmer cette relation chaque jour, la considérer comme notre meilleur investissement. End of quote. The same investment that he had made every day in his relation to the younger generations, something that Roberta is proudly and very effectively continuing. He loved exchanging with students. He would have loved being here including here at the College of Europe. He loved learning from them, from you, and giving back some of his knowledge and wisdom. He believed in the power of education and in the power of young people. Il clôturait le même article que j'ai déjà cité en écrivant, « Aujourd'hui, je cite, plus que jamais, il est urgent de regarder là où nous sommes et vers où nous voulons aller. » Nous ne pouvons pas ignorer les leçons que nous enseigne l'histoire de notre continent et de nos ancêtres. C'est une histoire riche en pages glorieuses, mais remplie aussi de souffrances et d'horreurs. Il est absolument nécessaire de privilégier la connaissance, la mémoire, la culture et l'éducation. Nous sommes tous mis à contribution, en particulier les jeunes générations, qui sont les plus actives et les plus engagées politiquement pour dessiner l'Europe de demain. La beauté de l'Europe réside dans le débat, dans le progrès que nous accomplissons ensemble, dans la construction d'une démocratie aussi participative que possible. Je crois que telle était la volonté de notre père fondateur et l'Europe d'aujourd'hui doit se montrer forte et résistante afin d'incarner à nouveau cet esprit d'innovation qui doit souffler sur nos consciences, sur nous tous, sur tous les citoyens européens. So somehow, he has left us before seeing the war on European soil, but I think he had seen it coming. 
He trusted you. He trusted younger generations to embody the spirit of innovation, as he said, that inspired the very beginning of the European integration process. And I'm sure that today he would have looked at you, so beautiful, so enthusiastic, so full of energy and joy, regardless of the difficulties of our times. He would have looked at you in this wonderful concert hall. He would have guessed your dreams, your frustrations, your worries, but most importantly, your aspirations. And he would have told you what he said in January 2021 to your fellow alumni of the Suarez promotion. He would have told you, don't be elite, be leaders. And this is, uh, these are the words, his words to our students two years ago with whom I would like you to start your academic year and to start your journey, continue your journey to be good Europeans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, this is our tribute to David. Thank you from his side, I think. Now, now it's uh, the moment to give you the floor. Uh, it is uh, for me really a pleasure every year and uh, an honor uh, to uh, invite on stage uh, two of the student representatives to address you, our guests, and to also introduce uh, our keynote speaker. And uh, before I invite them on the stage, let me say how appreciative we all are, not only myself, but all faculty and staff of the College of Europe for their contribution to our community life. Uh, being student representative is something special, it needs a lot of dedication and commitment, also a lot of time. And I would like to thank all the student representatives and all the students that have elected them for the contribution to this academic year. So Dimitro and Emily, please, the floor is yours.